Well, hello. It's time for another exciting episode of Pens in Use. This is the show where I talk about the fountain pens and inks. Move the microphone closer. <laughs> that I've been using throughout the week. So, let's dive into it. If videos like this interest you, where I talk about fountain pens, both new and old, and at all price points, I would invite you to subscribe. And hey, I brought up a plethora of topics here. Feel free to dive in. So, let's take a look at some pens. Alright, so these are the pens that I've been using this, well, <laughs> since the last time we were together. So from left to right, I have a $717i from Pakistan. I have an Arrhenus uh, from China. I have a Majon T5 from China. A Lintz, I'm calling it Capless. No, sorry, Clipless, because clearly there's a cap. Lintz Clipless pen from Germany, vintage pen. I have a Faber-Castell Osmia, which I think is German, but I'm not sure. Also vintage. I have a Pilot Custom 743 from Japan. I have... A Montblanc 32 from Germany and a Montblanc 225 from Germany, both vintage pens. And I have a Nakaya Decapod Twist from. Who makes Nakaya? Japan! <laughs> Awkward! Alright, so let's see how they write. For now, for a few more weeks, I'll be writing in this cognitive surplus notebook. Alright, so before I start writing with it, let's just take a look at this dollar pen. So uh, I got to school and saw that, oops, forgot to bring a pen. And, uh, you know, so I, I decided to ink this up because it happened to be in my desk. Now, it quickly proved to have a small inking problem here. You see that? All that ink all over. I'm not sure where the leak is coming from. But the pen definitely leaks. And not consistently. You know, I'd go a few days, no leak, no leak, no leak, and then whoop, leak. So I'm not sure you know, if the leak is between heat, the section and the body or where exactly it is. But there's definitely a leak. Okay, so it's a dollar. I like how the pen writes very much, but you can see I'm already getting inked. Um, I got a figure. Oh, and it blooped hasn't been doing that so it could be because it's been sitting for a while uh, 17 717i and the ink in it is Aurora Ooh, golly Aurora black yeah I don't think she liked sitting we'll do a quick little swatch I guess that's a quick way to use up some Aurora black so we'll do vertical and then horizontal stripes maybe that's what the leak is maybe it just normally bloops when I when it's capped don't know yeah there's another bloop <sighs> so a mystery to solve I'm going to clean the pen out and try to solve it don't remember that being a problem the last time I inked it up so mm, that's lovely alrighty that was a great start to the pens in use so clearly that didn't last long although the pen did start well so then I started using this also in my desk drawer as one of those pens that you know, if somebody expresses an interest they have there and I just give it away uh, it was actually given to me. This is Uranus. I, turns out I've never reviewed the pen. So I have three of them in my desk drawer. So I inked up the first one, and then I was walking around the room marking stuff on a paper that I was carrying. And one of the kids says, hey, you're leaving a trail. And yeah, I just left a big, long trail of ink all down the first row of my desks. So I just said, okay. And I inked up this one. And this one's been great. So I must have gotten a lemon. So, yes, a Junior High Boy's favorite planet. I don't know the model number. Like I said, it was given to me, so I don't know much about it. 
Also, weirdly enough, with Aurora Black. Almost like I'm trying to use it up. Because I am. Um, my goal is to get into a different bottle of black ink ne um, by the end of next month. Um, nothing against Aurora Black. It's not the best on lower quality paper. It's a very nice black, but yeah, I write too much on low quality paper. My next pen was a recent review. What happened to my lighting? Like, it was good, I thought, to start with, and now, holy cow, is that dark. Weird. Yeah, my exposure got dialed down somehow. All right, so this is, you know, very understated decoration. And just kind of that firework effect in it. So this is a Majon T5 pen. The ink in it is Diamine Damson. Very nice purple. Um, I don't know. When it runs dry, I probably won't replace it for now. I'll keep it on my short list of possible inks to buy in the future. But I'm more about writing down my ink collection. So this is one that's just got to go. And it's a small bottle, so it's an easy victory. And I have other purples I like as well. The pen is pleasant. I like it. I uh, I like it a lot more than I expected to, honestly. Very well made. I, I like the understated firework effect. I, I kind of wish it was more three-dimensional, but my understanding is that this is a brass pen with a lacquer on it, so kind of hard to have that three-dimensional effect. And, you know, for a lower-cost pen, I mean, really... What do you expect? <laughs> <coughs> this is my Lintz Clipless Pen. I call it that because I don't know what it's really called. Lintz is the brand. Uh, the ink in it is... Good question. Roar and Klingner Blue Mar. I accidentally have two pens with this ink in, ink in it this week. Another ink that I'm trying to use up. I have one more ink in this, no, two more inks in the, ooh. That's not good. Oh, yeah, and it's almost empty, so that could be why. I have two more inks, I guess, in this color family. I have a little bit of Monteverde turquoise left. And then I have Lamy turquoise. So I'll probably go to the Monteverde next, because I only have a little bit. And then I'll go with the Lamy. Get it used up. Then we'll see what I like. Uh, this is a Faber-Castell Osmia 882. So a vintage pen. with a very fun nib. One of my students had seen a, I guess a TikTok. But anyway, they, he was talking about how the end of the pen would go like this. Like, yep, that's what we got right here going on. So this is a Faber-Castell Osmia 882. It has an extra fine nib, which you know, no pressure, you can see. And the ink in it I bought in uh, North Dakota's pen store. Uh, uh, Zan Bros in Fargo. They also sell books. So this is Lamy Bronze. Somewhere long, long ago I did a video where I talked about, Zan I took you on a tour of Zan Bros. Um, tried telling the owner about it. I mean, I told him that I was filming and asked his permission and all that, but anyway, the contact 
on their website doesn't work so I guess he'll never know anyway Lamy bronze and then I have another one with a nib that goes whoop this is a pilot custom 743 has a falcon nib on it so pilot custom 743 and the ink in it another one I'm trying to use up Iroshizuku Kirisami which uh, yeah, it's a pleasant enough gray I like the Fuyu Shogun a lot better this one has more yellow in it I'd say that Fuyu Shogun is just so cool and nice so I, I have uh, this bottle to use up which I'm close and then I have a bottle of Omos Gray, which is discontinued, but you know what, I don't care. I want to use it up. And then I'll be able to buy myself a nice big bottle of Eroshizuku Fuyu Shogun and call her good for Gray. I have my Mont Blanc 32. Very first Mont Blanc I ever owned. Beautifully restored by Proto Pens. No affiliation, just a satisfied customer. Has a neat little fingernail type nib. Just a fun pen. So this is a Mont Blanc. 32. This pen is uh, definitely an extra fine and it takes forever to run it dry. So maybe I should be using, like for these inks I want to use up, I should be using the flexi nibs or the big fat stub nibs or something. I don't know. But anyway, Roarer and Klingner. Blue Mar. I forgot the E and the Mar up top. And my square got a little squunched, but that's okay. Um, this is going a lot better than my pen video filming experience this evening good gravy pen I was kind of excited about and it started well and then all of a sudden I just like ah, I don't want to write anymore so I got to play with it and see what's going on but this writes beautifully here's my other Mont Blanc um, I don't think this is from Proto Pens you know, Proto Pens probably wouldn't have found that acceptable they probably would have found a bird splat to put in there but I like this pen this could easily be a daily writer for me so Mont Blanc 225 it has a fine nib on it it has an extra fine nib on it I apologize and the ink in it is Edelstein Smoky Quartz Another ink I'm working on using up. Oh, it's a brown ink. I've found a brown ink that I like. That's a Gerbon Lee de Tay. I don't need this one. So we'll use this one up. And then I already do own a bottle of Gerbon Lee de Tay, so I'll just focus on that as my brown. And someday, far in the future, I'll get this ink collection back under control. I don't know how it happened. It's just like one day I woke up and said, Holy buckets, you've got a lot of ink there, dude. My last pen, which definitely doesn't go out in public, <laughs> is my Nakaya Decapod Twist. A pen that you bought me through the advertising dollars I get on the channel. I love this thing. 
The Kaya Decapod Twist. This has a soft, fine nib on it. And the ink is the lovely Rohrer and Klingner. Alt Goldgrim. This is the same nib as you would find in a Platinum 3776. Uh, it's just branded Nakaya instead of Platinum because Platinum owns Nakaya. I was kind of surprised that Nakaya didn't use their President nib, but then Platinum sells its own line of pens that use the President nib, so maybe that's why. But, uh, Kind of a fun little nib to write with. Alright, so those are the pens and inks I've been using this week. So those are the pens and inks I've been using throughout the week. Um, so I'm going to start, with, I'm just going to hit a couple of different topics. Uh, first of all, I have missed a few weekends and I'm sorry. Um, busy, busy times, <laughs> and uh, exciting times. Hopefully you'll find out some of that excitement on Sunday. I'll come back to that. So first things first, I uh, talked earlier about a title screen. I uh, haven't got the creative muse yet. You know, I, f I feel the desire to create a new title screen. You just saw the old one. Um, haven't come up with quite what I want to do different that's new. So, uh, we're going to go with the old one for a while longer yet, but I'm hoping one of these days that that creative muse will strike me and uh, we'll have something fun. Okay, on other topics, I am uh, working toward uh, alternating driving videos and book reviews, you know, every other week. I uh, was doing book reviews on every Monday and then driving videos on Sundays and I think I'm going to do them both on Sundays, and uh, that way they're the same day, and uh, you know, it, it spaces things out nicely, I guess. <laughs> so, uh, I have uh, quite a driving video coming. I, uh, In fact, I'm probably going to do part two next week instead of a book. I got into the topic of book banning, and... Uh, you know, it turns out my own state of North Dakota is engaged in book banning. Possibly. Not yet there. Uh, but our state legislature does have a bill, two bills, about book banning in front of it. And uh, it's kind of a scary time. I'm hoping the voices of reason will prevail, but you never know. Uh, I, I know some people who are, you know, active in politics, more active than I am. You know, they're actually engaged in it. And uh, they're talking about how they... Basically, the crazies are taking over local party politics. And uh, it's not my party, but... Uh, you know, just making it hard for the reasonable people to have a voice. So, a little scared for the future there. And uh, not sure what's going to happen. So, yeah, stay tuned. I'll have that up on Sunday, and we'll, we'll talk through those two bills that North Dakota's looking at, and uh, then next week we'll get into the broader story, and you know, if it takes another week after that, it takes another week after that, but um, I, I feel it's an important topic, so it'll be coming. Um, as far as driving video, not there yet. But I'm coming up on some exciting footage, so I'm kind of hoping that the book thing is finished before I get to the exciting footage, because uh, we'll be going through Walhalla, we're going to visit Mountain, North Dakota, we're going to visit some, some actual forest. Um, some really good scenery is coming. I, I, I felt like it was important to share what Eastern North Dakota looks like. <laughs> Flat. <laughs> But there's also some other stuff in eastern North Dakota. So uh, 
yeah, Pembina Gorge and all that is definitely coming up. Um, looking at, I, I've been kind of watching Hemingway Jones, and I'm looking at, you know, he, he, he does some on-location footage. Now, he has the advantage of being located in New England, and uh, here I am in North Dakota, but you know, he, he's been using a lot of on-location footage as B-roll, and I just keep thinking, okay, it, I don't have New England, I, can, I do have New England, but it's New England, North Dakota, which is hardly the same thing. Um, but it has me thinking that maybe it'd be kind of fun to use some B-roll footage just from the Dakotas. So I'm looking at doing that, uh, just taking more video footage when I visit a place and uh, you know, inserting it and using it. Just make spice my videos up. It'll give them a different flavor. And, uh, you know, what other pen reviewer is doing B-roll footage from North Dakota or any Dakota for that matter? So, uh, I'm, I'm thinking about trying that. Um, don't expect it right now. I don't know if the microphone's picking it up, but the wind is howling out there. Uh, I would not want to drive on the roads out there right now because they're coated with ice and the snow is blowing. So, uh, yeah. Mm, perfectly happy being here at home. <laughs> uh, let's see what else do I have on my list. Oh! So, uh, one of my things... I've been thinking a lot about is just kind of keeping a balance between work. You know, YouTube is one of my hobbies. I don't want work to take over my life. I don't want YouTube to take over my life. I, I don't want fun to take over my life. You know, just keep it all in balance. So I'm going to tell you a little something about when I started working. When I was a new teacher, I would spend a lot of nights staying up to like one. 1 30 in the morning I was young then I was you know in my 20s but then I'd go to work the next day exhausted but you know I'd spend all that time working and uh what's the point and I had some problems with the first place where I worked so I ended up switching jobs went to a new school and I became guilty of the exact same thing at the new school I'd stay up late. Um, I started to figure out there that, oh, I don't work real efficiently at night. But I'd still do it. And uh, I got so I hated it there. And I let some negative things about where I was working influence me. I thought, well, you know, this is a small school. It's probably not going to be open when I retire. And realistically, back then, that was a definite possibility. Right now, I think it will be open, but, you know. So I moved on to a larger school. I had one less prep at this larger school. And weirdly enough, where I'm teaching right now, I have one less prep. Um, but anyway, I started to think about work-life balance. And uh, where I was working, I have not done my video on that school yet because it is more negative than the other two places I've done videos on. But one of the positives that came out of there was realizing that I have a life. I, I'm a person. I, I have interests. I have my own self to develop. Uh, it's not selfish to say that, oh, I want to do this. And uh, I'm a lot more recharged for my kids when I actually have a life of my own. So that's what been one of my things lately. Um, I, I've done pretty well where, I, where I'm at now, you know, the last 17 years. I, I think that's why I've stayed here 17 years, is uh, I very much improved that balance. I struggled this past fall a lot because I was uh, taking a class while also teaching five different courses. <laughs> the joys of a small school, I guess. But uh, now that class is over. I, I've got a project I need to finish for the class, and going to work on it this weekend but you know the main thing is I uh, 
I realize I have realized that you know sometimes maybe don't do the big project at work because it's going to eat up too much of my time. Uh, sometimes it's you know you just don't have time to film a video and edit it and uh, plan it and all that stuff. So. Over the past year or so, you've seen me skip a few videos, and that's why I just, uh, I want that balance. So, uh, I'm always aiming to do everything on certain days, but, you know, some things don't get done, they don't get done. Um, always prioritize some things, you know, absolute must. Oop, taxes are due, gotta get that done. Um, oop, this important thing for school is due, gotta get that done. Oop, kids took a test. You expected them to take that test, you got to get it graded. You know, I only allow myself two days for anything with the kids turn in, and uh, that's respect for them. Uh, it's actually helpful for me, too, because uh, I don't carry it around. I'm just like, yeah, got to get that done. But, uh, you know, my main thing is finding that balance. And I don't want to quit things. I don't want to quit YouTube. I don't want to quit my job. I don't want to quit anything. But everything has to find its happy place. So uh, I'm going to do better this spring because I'm not taking a class. But you know, just be aware that if I miss videos, I'm busy. <laughs> I have a life and I have a job. And uh, I have a YouTube. So they all have to find their happy balance. That's all there is to it. I'm just going to mention one other thing. So I did a live stream, I guess it was over the holidays, but I'm thinking I'd like to do a monthly live stream. I'm uh, not going to do one in January. I, I thought about it, but you know, it would have to be tomorrow, and uh, it's just not going to happen. Unless certain things fall into place in my life, but we'll see. If, if they fall into place, it'll be Sunday, but anyway, <laughs> what I'm thinking is every month I'd like to do a meeting of the Badlands Pen Club. That's my uh, fantasy pen club for the area. Okay, I live in southwestern North Dakota. I'm going to pop up some photographs. I have some driving footage, but it's kind of buried. I'll pop up some photographs of the Badlands. I live basically on the edge of the Badlands, and you know there's Badlands within view of my town. Um, so we're going to do, I, I want to do a monthly meeting of the Badlands Pen Club, and I want to alternate so that, okay, one month we're going to do it in the morning so that my overseas viewers can take part. And then the next month we'll do it in the evening, my evening, so that my U.S. visitors are more comfortable. And of course, everybody's invited to everything. But I'm going to try doing that because I want to... I, I, I enjoy the live streaming. And I think it'll be just kind of a fun way to get together. I've been using this software, software called StreamYard. And I'm not... I'm not... Great. <laughs> Stuff like that. But I see that I can invite other users other people so probably the first couple times i'm going to be just me and we'll we'll just talk through the chat but i what i'd like to do is start having a few people on screen i i'm using because i'm cheap <laughs> the the free stream yard i'm just kind of thinking it'd be fun to have people on screen and actually converse in person um, I, I took part in that during the lockdown and shortly thereafter with, I won't say the name because I think it's private, but, you know, another pen person and, uh, really enjoyed it. You know, I got to meet a lot of pen people. He, he's a, uh, let's say a European pen person and, uh, I got to meet a lot of other European pen people who don't even have YouTube channels and a couple who do, um, couple who own large pen businesses and uh but it was very interesting talking to all those people so you know sadly that's been discontinued but you know they're now meeting in person so 
But I'd like to just try that, you know, meet people virtually and uh, put it on the channel. I uh, have no interest in doing any marketing. Um, the only company I market for is Big Vintage Pen, and that's not a real company. So <laughs> I, I, I've actually been drawing, trying to draw a logo for that. So, hey, if you know how to draw a logo, let me know. I could use your help before April 1st. But anyway, I've been uh, drawing. Uh, I, I think it'll be kind of fun. And the stream yard lets several people be on screen at the same time. So, uh, you know, um, we'll have to figure out how to accomplish that. Who wants to be on it? But, uh, you know, who would rather just be in the chat? Because chat's a part, big part of doing a live stream. And I learned finally how to put uh, comments and live stream onto, onto the screen. So that helps. Um I just, you hear me staring going, um, a lot. It's because I'm excited and yet very unsure. But I think it'll be something fun. Uh, Hemingway Jones has done live streams. He does some, he does them every week. I, I, uh, I just can't. <laughs> but uh, I, I've never been able to catch his live streams, you know, live. But uh, it's been very interesting seeing what he does with live streams and just seeing somebody who's really good at it doing a live stream so i think once a month uh every other month you know once in the morning next month in the evening so i can get my u.s and european and australian viewers in and my asian viewers i think it'll be fun so uh you know let me know what you think I'm looking for ideas, you know, should my live streams be really themed or should they uh, be broad? Well, let us, let me know down in the comments. So, yeah, I guess uh, what I was uncomfortable at thinking of a comment or what to say theme at the beginning, that's what I'm looking for is uh, what should I do with live streaming? If I do it once a month, um, should there be topics? Should I invite people? Should it just be me? Let me know. So, anyway, I want to thank you for watching. I want to thank you for sticking with me. We're in 2003. No, sorry, 2023. We are barreling up on 6,000 subscribers. I remember my excitement when I hit 100 subscribers. To hit 6,000 is exciting. And I'm going to hit it this year. Unless, you know, people stop watching. Um... So thank you for watching, and uh, thank you for taking part in all this. And if videos like this interest you, where I talk about fountain pens, both new and old, and at all price points, I would invite you to subscribe. And again, would welcome some thoughts and live streams. Guests or no? Topic or no? No, let, let me know down in the comments. And I don't want to start saying, oh, we're going to hustle this particular business this, this month. And I don't want to do that. I just want to get fun people on. So uh, let me you know, give me your ideas down in the comments. So I want to thank you for watching. We'll talk to you later. Bye-bye.